Welcome to VMC. I'm Dr. M. Today we are going to cover canine osteoarthritis treatment options. Your own veterinary team will need to select what specific options are best for your individual dog. Those recommendations can vary based on the specific joint or joints affected, the specific contributing disease processes, if there are any, as well as the rest of your dog's medical history. So join me. You'll learn something today. With all of the treatment and management options that we have, the specific best options will vary based on your individual situation, your dog's medical history, what options your veterinarian has access to as it varies from country to country, as well as your financial situation and so on. So I'm just going to cover the very common treatment options that we have and that we use for many of our osteoarthritis patients. Now, when we start to talk about treatment and management options, we have a lot of them, which is great because multimodal treatment of osteoarthritis is necessary. One of the very first and major things that I want all of my clients to do is to get their dogs down to a lean body condition score four to five out of nine. It's such a big deal that one of my first videos I did was actually how to do healthy weight loss for dogs because we need to preserve muscle mass while helping them to lose fat. And so this is an important thing to do carefully. If your dog is a body condition score of six, seven, eight, or nine, you will need to help them lose a bit of weight to get back down to a four or five out of nine. So I'm going to put some pictures of what a four and a five out of nine look like so that you can see what that actually is in a dog. Most people think that their dogs are an ideal body condition score when actually they're overweight. Next, we're going to cover pain management. We have a number of different ways to address pain, which is excellent as many of our patients require multimodal pain management. A newer product on the market are anti-nerve growth factor monoclonal antibodies. In dogs, this product is called Librella and it helps to interrupt pain signals that are sent from the painful area to the dog's brain, which reduces the pain that the dog feels. Depending on where you're located, they might not be available to you quite yet, but I know that they are coming to North America soon. It might be something to talk to your veterinarian about if you haven't already. As osteoarthritis does cause inflammation, having an anti-inflammatory component to the pain management protocol is a foundational piece and is very necessary. We have a lot of typical non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Using these is very necessary to reduce inflammation and therefore reduce pain for the dog. We do also have another newer chronic pain management medication and that's called Galaprant. It also helps to reduce inflammation but does so in a different way than our typical non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs do and so considering Galaprant may be an appropriate choice for your dog. We can also use Amantadine for chronic pain pain. We can also use gabapentin and pregabalin for chronic pain. This is because the longer that pain persists in the body, the more likely there becomes a component that is nerve related. And so using pregabalin or gabapentin is a wonderful adjunct medication for many chronic pain patients. For some patients, we also end up using muscle relaxants. Now these don't necessarily deal with the pain that is caused from the osteoarthritis, but if the dog is compensating and weight shifting and other muscles are getting painful and tight because of that, the muscle relaxants can be very helpful and wonderful tools to use. Now, I always note here that tramadol is not an effective pain relief for dogs. We have research showing that it's just not bioavailable for them, so tramadol is not an appropriate choice here. Most veterinarians are aware of this research by now, but of course it's impossible for all of us to keep up with everything. So if your veterinarian is still recommending tramadol for pain management, decline it and get another option instead. Next, we need to consider using Adequan. This is a polysulfated glycosaminoglycan and there is a loading dose and then 
down to once a month or so depending on the individual dog's response. Adequan works by slowing down the degradation of the cartilage and it also helps to improve the quality of the joint fluid, which means that as the dog is weight-bearing, it's like there's better cushions between their bones in their joints. Considering Adequan is something that's very common, talk to your veterinarian about it. Next, we need to consider the world of supplements. Boy oh boy, are there ever so many out there touting all sorts of various things. But when you actually dive down into the research, there's very little that's been proven to be effective. Notably, glucosamine and chondroitin does not appear to relieve pain for dogs with osteoarthritis. Again, there are still some veterinarians that aren't aware of the more recent research on this. So if your veterinarian is recommending glucosamine and chondroitin for pain management, you should decline that and get another option from them. Now it maybe is possible that it might be slowing down the progression of the joint disease, but maybe not. <laughs> we don't know. And so there are many other things that are proven to be effective that are much better choices to spend money on. The supplement that does have the most proven research behind it is actually omega fatty acids. Now in this area we need to be aware of a few things. One, the bulk of the research on omega fatty acids are done with prescription diets. We have JM from Purina Veterinary Diets, we have Mobility from Royal Canin, we have JD from Hills, and all of those diets do have research behind them. And the research shows that these diets do improve mobility, improve function, and reduce pain for the dogs that have osteoarthritis. So depending on your dog's medical needs, considering a prescription mobility diet may be appropriate. However, there are going to be some dogs that need a different diet for a variety of reasons. In those dogs, we need to be very careful about where we get the fatty acid supplementation from. We know that our dogs don't have the ability to use plant-based omega fatty acids like flax seed and so on. It's crucial that the omega fatty acids come from fish oils, sardines, that sort of thing. Dose is also important. We are aiming for a about 100 milligrams per kilogram of the combination of EPA and DHA. Many of the over-the-counter supplements for dogs that claim to have omega fatty acids either don't have near enough or what's actually in the product when the product is tested does not match what the label says. So make very sure to ask your veterinarian for a specific product recommendation. Nutraceuticals is a complicated subject that's difficult <laughs> to navigate. I really should do a video on it and I'll, I'll do that one day. I'm gonna add it to my list. The other things we need to be careful about are flavorings and vitamin D because it can be very easy to overdose vitamin D with these supplements and some flavorings aren't appropriate for our dogs or can cause stomach upset or toxicity problems. There are also going to be some dogs that can't have this amount of fatty supplementation to their diet. So adding omega fatty acids may not be appropriate for your dog. Make sure to talk to your veterinarian about it. The way that the omega fatty acids work is they incorporate into the cells and they end up reducing the inflammatory pathways that occur. I also wanted to note that it does take two months for the omega fatty acids to fully incorporate into the cells. So this isn't something that you're going to expect a dramatic change 24 hours later. I am going to put in the video description the other videos I've already done on weight loss. And I'm also going to put some other resources in there about canine arthritis. And I would love to hear from you what you learned from today's video or what has worked best for your dog in the past. If you have a future video topic suggestion, definitely comment that down below. I always love to get those suggestions. I put out a new video most Fridays, so I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye for now!